Hello and welcome back to Modded Minecraft Feed the Bees. Last episode we messed around with mine colonies as you can see in the background there. It was kind of fiddly getting all the materials that the builder needed to build his building over there, but we finally got it done in the end. Now I've discovered something pretty exciting and cool this episode because I think I found a way for us to make beehives without actually having to silk touch any grass and I should have known it. It's straight through the Resourceful Bees mod, obviously. Also, we're going to be using a nice, neat trick to mine some of the all the modium that we found, some of the super rare metal, with a cyclic block breaker, if I said that right. It means you don't have to get a pickaxe that can actually mine the metal, and you can use a block that does it instead. Okay, well, let's jump in. Oh, ho, ho, ho! Right, so you may have noticed that we've actually had quite an upgrade to our house. Honey home has had a massive, massive upgrade in the form of I finally finished the roof. Well, I didn't finish the roof. I ran out of um, slabs, so I've only done a few of them. But most of most of the roof is done. And we also built this really cool tower. And what this tower is going to let us do is just take a look at our farm. Can you imagine looking at here in like 20 episodes time when we've got fields and fields and barns and windmills and... Uh, pastures, all of those lovely things, maybe stables for that horse that's been knocking around there for like six years. It's going to be amazing just to think back at how far we've come. So let's go downstairs and talk about some bees. So as I mentioned, the house is a work in progress and the inside looks a bit drab and bare. We finished the staircase and we put the walls in, but it's still very much just a basic wood and stone build. I can't wait to start working on furniture, but we'll do that in a decoration episode. This episode, we're going to talk about hives. I mean, the kind you get from Resourceful Bees mod. Sorry, I get distracted while I'm smoking my bees. Oh, hubbana hubbana, 420. So what was I talking about? Yeah, right. So we're going to be upgrading these bee nests into bee hives. Now, previously, I thought that I needed grass, and you do. If we look in here, you can see beehive requires grass, the actual grass block. And so I was thinking to myself, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Do I have to go down mystical agriculture? Do I have to get a silk touch pickaxe? I was, I was fretting, but I shouldn't have been because... The best way to get grass is actually to use nature essence. But the best way to get nature essence is actually through a centrifuge from resourceful bees. Leafy honeycomb turns itself into a 50% chance of getting a nature essence and a 1% chance of getting another nature essence. Is that not fantastic? And that's super lucky because I actually have a leafy bee here that we've had generating honeycomb for us all this time. So I think if I'm lucky, we're going to be able to turn the leafy honeycomb that we have here, got some extra ones just now, into enough nature essence to make the leaves and grass we need for a beehive. But before we do that, let's make another chest and empty our pack. So step one is putting the leafy combs into this mechanical centrifuge. And if we're lucky, we're going to be able to turn... Oh, wait, where, where is it? If we're lucky, we're going to be able to turn it into enough nature essence. Now, there's no guarantee. We could get really, really, really unlucky and not get enough leafy essence. So it's time to engage my bionic arm and, uh, and grind up these, these honeycombs. Oh, yeah! I feel like Ash from uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead. I worry that actually... Ooh, there we go. Ooh, better turn this... Oh, hang on. Oh, God. Turn off my macro. No! There we go. Oh, yeah, and we've got plenty. Look at this. We've got some honey bottles. And we've got some nature essence. Now, this also functions as a light snack. So let's have a bit of a drink. Oh, ho, ho, a unique flavor. We've gained a heart. Boom. In the bag. So something we haven't looked at also is advancements, and they've been modified for the pack. And as you can see, some of these mods are ones that we're doing. For example, Silent Gear. Well, it's got a whole little kind of uh, achievement tree of its own. Very interesting. 
And if you're ever stuck about where to go next with a mod, you can always just follow the chain of things you should be doing next. So first we're going to need some nests. I should have some in my backpack. Nests? Any nests in here? Oh, I thought I gathered some. I must... Oh, I, I know where I've put them. I've put them in the, uh, in the bee chest, obviously. There we go. We've got some prismarine bee nests. Two should be enough to start with. So, oh wait, it's in the centrifuge. We've got the nature essence, 21 of these. Nature essence is used to make grass, right? There it is, grass, bam. Too large to craft in the, oh right, yeah. So we put it here, here, and here, and this makes us grass, cool. And basically, I think this is all we really want to use this nature essence for. So I might as well make 36. So now that we've got the grass, we can put our bee nests in the middle, grass around the edge, and bada boom, bada bing, a couple of tier one beehives. These are amazing. These let us have four bees at a time inside the nest instead of two. And it lets us have a max honeycombs of five inside the hive. That's amazing. Also, the biggest thing is the fact that there's no time penalty on a beehive compared to a bee nest. So, okay, that's amazing. How do we upgrade this bad boy into a tier two? So for tier two, we need any honeycomb and beeswax. Whoa, well, hold the phone, Al Capone. I can already make that right now. We might as well use some of these spider honeycombs because they make string, which we've kind of got um, plenty of with our hemp outside. And beeswax, 22. Oh, ho, ho. man, we've gone from like zero to hero. And hey presto, a couple of tier two beehives. Let's give the rest of our hives this same treatment. So we're gonna need to get the empty bee jar we have here, capture up the bees that are outside and upgrade all of these hives that we have outside. Oh, before we do, let's get some honeycomb. Okay, perfect. That's, I think that's all the bees. None in there. None in there. Zero there. Oh, the leafy bee, the star of the show. This guy has honestly done insane work for us so far. Finding him was the luckiest thing we've done. Okay, let's go upgrade these bad boys inside. A tier one beehive. Boom. A tier one beehive. And they should stack. And there's no more differentiation in the colors. But that's okay. We should still know what's going on based on the blocks that we've put outside the hives. Now also I'm going to raise my hives up by uh, one block just because when the bees come out they get a bit stuck because of the fences and the blocks that are so close. So we're going to see if we've got in my bag a nice pretty kind... Oh we can use the jacarinda, jacarinda, jacarinda planks. And we're just going to sit the bees nests on the bees hives even on these blocks. There we go. Plank's gone down. And now we put down the tier two beehives. Ho, ho, ho. And these things are good looking bad boys. Look at that. Minus 10% hive modification time. They can hold eight honeycombs and they can hold six bees. That's crazy. Oh ho ho! So these function exactly the same way as a nest does. You need to smoke it first and get the honeycomb second. But as you can see, there's four bees in here so out of a possible six. The honey level is zero. And what we can do now is because we want to fill these up, we can start to think about breeding. So how do you get RGBs to breed? Very simple. You have to use dye. Dye is what gets them going. And I think we have some lying around. Let's go see if this works. I wonder if there's a way to get bees to come out of their hives. Okay, come here, boys. Oh, right, yeah, so the, the bees, much like cows, if you're holding wheat, they will swarm around you if you have dye in your hands. There we go. Giving all these bees the love treatment. Oh, yeah, look, and we've got some baby bees. Has the lasagna. Good Anya. Amazing. Perfect. So we've got three small bees there. I'm not quite sure how that's worked. There's four bees and we've got three baby bees. 
Aren't bees supposed to spawn with queens? Also, I think what I'm going to have to do is get the stone axe out and uh, chop these fences away because the bees keep getting stuck on the fences. I'll keep the ones at the edge, but it's just the ones in the middle that are kind of giving my bees a bit of problem. The ones near to the things that they're trying to pollinate with. I think what I'll do after this session is I'll give this whole bee area a complete redesign. I'm not quite sure if it's time yet to fully automate my bees, uh, but we're definitely getting close to that. Okay, next up we need the leafy bee. So where have we put our leafy bee? He is, of course, the MVP. Star player on our team. He's the one that gave us the hives. I mean, not in a bad way. And what did he like? Oh, he liked hedges. That's right. That's why there's no pollination thing near him. Boom. Enjoy the leaves, bro. Enjoy the leaves. Now, actually, because I really want more leafy bees, I'm going to check this guy out with the Beepedia. If you right-click on him, it automatically gives him gives you the one that you're looking at. And this can mutate into... Let's see. If I feed these guys leaves, they'll breed into other leafy bees. And mutations-wise, they will mutate leafy honeycomb blocks into potentially a jar with a leafy bee in it. So I'm going to wait until this guy's given me enough honeycomb to do that. But let's go and check out. Oh, yeah, already, look, you can see this hive is brimming with RGB honey. Bees 5 of 6, honey level 5, smoked false. That's about to become true. Yum, yum, yum. Scoopy scoop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at this. Eight honeycombs. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, we've upgraded we've upgraded our hives so much. This is super fantastic. This is amazing. Okay, so item number two on our agenda today is we're going to go and make a cyclic block breaker and get some of that all the modium that we marked a few episodes ago. So let's see. A cyclic block breaker. A cyclic block breaker. Breaks blocks placed in front of it. This requires lapis, which we have. A tripwire hook. Does it have to be mossy cobblestone? I think it does. A dispenser. Iron pickaxe. Stone shovel. Well, okay. It's a bit of a weird recipe, but I think we have what we need to do it. Action stations. Boom, and I have a cyclic block breaker. Now I have no idea how this actually works. All I know is I read somewhere that this is the business and this is how you get all the modium. But does it actually work? The million dollar question. Well, we need a million dollar answer for it, so let's go down into the mine and, uh, and give it a try. Now, as you can see, I've redecorated the mine shaft a bit. Ooh, looks, looks deep. Ooh. All right, so if memory serves, it's towards the ocean this way. And I believe it's that yellow waypoint right along there. So I'm just going to enable F7 and put down some torches as I go to make sure that monsters don't spawn down here. Ho, ho, ho. So I think once we get these, we can actually remove it. Um, right, so how does a block breaker work? Let's try it on this gravel. So if I put it like that. Block breaker requires redstone. Well, it looks pretty basic and simple. Shouldn't have too many problems with it. Have I got a pickaxe in here? I do, I've got a stone pickaxe. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, that's going to be enough to get it. Perfect. So in theory, I don't want to mess this up, so I've got to make sure I do this right first time. If I put the block breaker down like that, I put the lever on the other side like this, and then boom. Oh, white. What blew up? Was was that related to the block breaker? I don't know. Well, anyway, it worked. Let's do it. We're going to put down first the block breaker. Ho, ho, ho. We're going to get the lever. Put it on the side and fingers crossed this better work. 
Oh ho ho! All the modium ore! I've got it! I've done it! Hot diggity damn! Now let's just rinse repeat the same for the next one. Amazing! Okay, let's grab... Oh wait! Let's grab that all the modium before it... Oh my god! Where's it going? Let's grab it before it floats away. Oh, terracotta. Man, who knew? Cyclic block breaker, game changer. Two blocks of all the modium. Oh my god. So all the modium ore can be used, and you're supposed to apparently triple this ore if you can. It can be used to, we can crush it into all the modium crushed ore. Anyway, I'm fairly sure you can use mechanism to turn this bad boy into three ingots. And because we've got two, that can make six ingots of all the modium ore. That's a lot of ingots, a lot of power. We've got to choose carefully what we turn those ingots into before we move forwards. But that's it for this episode. We didn't touch the mine colony this time. Uh, next time, maybe we'll do the town hall. But this episode, I really wanted to get those hives done and I wanted to get my hands on that sweet, sweet all the modium ore. Next episode, like I said, we'll do the mine colonies thing and then we'll look into what we're going to turn the all the modium ore into because it's very valuable and what you do next with it is kind of important for your progress in this mod pack. Also, we've got to work on automation for our bees so that we get lots of honey without having to constantly hit the hives with our scraper. I've been Stjin, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, ding that bell to get notifications. And also, if you want to become a member and help the channel, memberships are open. Until next time, though, take care.